Hello, kind viewers, and welcome to Golden Age Technology on Supreme Master Television. Today we present part one of a two-part series introducing the Venus Project, a holistic, resource-based vision of the future advocated by celebrated American inventor, designer, and futurist Jacques Fresco. I don't believe in utopia. I believe that every city can be improved continuously, that there are no final frontiers, no best car you could make, no best transportation. It will always change. The Venus Project is a comprehensive plan to create a world where humans, animals, and nature coexist peacefully. The goal is to resolve all of today's serious world issues, such as climate change and hunger, through a restructuring of global society. Mr. Fresco is confident that this enormous transformation would usher in a new age of harmony, prosperity, and cultural advancement. Implementation of the Venus Project would move us away from the current monetary-based economic system to a resource-based economy where our planet's gifts are designated as the heritage of all people. Designers and engineers would build holistic, sustainable cities using advanced technology. Mr. Fresco is considered to be a genius and visionary. He has a background in industrial design and previously worked as a consultant and researcher in the aviation industry. He once was employed by an aircraft manufacturer who asked him to work on technical issues that no one at the company was able to solve. He said, when a big plane lands and the wheels touch the ground, the rubber of the tires is worn out, and those tires are very expensive. He says, can you do anything about that? I says, I can try. So in about an hour and a half, I made a drawing of a wheel with veins in the middle of the wheel. So when the landing gear came down, the wind turned the wheel around. And when it hit the ground, it was turning. And it was easier. It didn't lose as much rubber. And after about three weeks, he said, Jock, you made more contributions in three weeks than the history of aviation. He has authored numerous books, including Designing the Future, produced and been featured in documentaries, and traveled extensively, promoting his ideas in television and radio interviews and seminars throughout the world. His dreams for the future have culminated in the Venus Project, which he began in 1975 with colleague Roxanne Meadows. The project is ongoing and headquartered at a nine-hectare research center in Florida, USA. Supreme Master Television had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Fresco and Ms. Meadows, who both graciously shared their time to discuss the Venus Project at length. My name is John Fresco. I'm the designer of the Venus Project and the resource-based economy. The Venus Project is declaring the Earth as the common heritage of all the world's people. All the resources, all the knowledge is to be shared by people. There would be no patents anymore. But all people would be taken care of. There would be no money. The Venus Project states that we have a lot of unsolved problems. That's where we have to be working, on unsolved problems. If I had anything to do with it, I would take all the soldiers, send them back to school to become problem solvers. Because we have millions of problems that are not solved. But war does not solve problems. Mr. Fresco believes that to make real progress as a global society, all cultures must work together in unity. Only then a true world community can emerge that serves the common welfare of all. To me, everybody on earth is important. And I think that all nations make contributions. And so we owe so much to so many nations. I would like to see them all join together and work on common problems, cancer, heart disease, the common problems that bother all people all over the world, to have no armies, no navies, no police, and no prisons. 
As long as you have armies, navies, police, and prisons, you are not civilized, from my point of view. Now, of course, you're not going to understand all this in one shot, but I can tell you that people are shaped by culture. But if you're brought up to believe that certain things are right and certain things are wrong, you're dealing with a fixed value system inherited from the distant past. I would say that in the future, all the races would grow up together and children would have no attitude about Japanese or Chinese or Greeks or Polish people, no attitude. Jacques Fresco was born in 1916 and grew up in New York City, USA. In terms of education, he is mostly self-taught. When young, he was fascinated by the aeronautical engineering field and would later go on to design new aviation technology, such as systems for noiseless and pollution-free aircraft and an innovative aircraft wing structural system. My background was very different. My grandfather talked to me about people coming from all over the world and bringing ideas to America. The printing press, language, religion, all these things were brought by many different people and many different cultures. And he said, Jock, if you really like the world, why don't you pledge allegiance to taking care of nature, the oceans, and all the world's people? Don't pledge allegiance to any one nation. I was about 14 and a half or 15 years old, and I left school. And uh, I used to leave home with books, because my mother wouldn't understand it. And I'd go to the library, or the museums, or the Science and Industry Museum in New York, and I'd read what I wanted to read. And I'd listen to all points of view of different people. His study of the world, politics, and societies has led Jacques Fresco to believe that the global monetary system is the root cause of many of the urgent issues facing our planet today, and the solution is a shift to a resource-based economy. This principle is at the heart of Mr. Fresco's philosophy and of the Venus Project. I see a resource-based economy. By resource-based, I mean, instead of money, Jesus chased the money changers out of the temple. And they say to me, without money, people would lose their incentive. Well, that's another myth that's perpetuated. Because what they don't understand is Gandhi did what he did, not for money. Nobody gave Gandhi 2000 or $100,000 to work for the freedom of India. He did it because he believed in it. Martin Luther King marched not for money. He walked into the South because he believed in what he was doing. I believe when people believe in what they're doing and they work for the betterment of society, they had many less human problems. How does a resource-based economy differ from a monetary-based economy? The Venus Project differs from the monetary system in many, many ways. All people in the Venus Project will have access to the necessities of life without a price tag. All the world's people will have the same access to all of the necessities of life. The schools will be different. They will teach children that all people require the same thing. Clean air, clean water, nutritious food, and a relevant education. The earth belongs to everybody. The society of the future will provide for all human needs. The project's cities would be built in a circular fashion to maximize land and energy efficiency with research and learning facilities located in the city's core. Designated access centers would provide goods and services to citizens, and ample parks and green spaces would surround the residential districts. If you can get the picture of this city, you'll notice that it's circular. The reason for that 
is we design one-eighth of the system. By designing one-eighth of the system, repeating it makes it much less expensive. The design standardized major research centers in the middle, those are all research centers. One of the centers might be education, the other might be agriculture. Another one of the centers might be production of goods and services. So you have everything that that city needs. All the rooftops are photovoltaic. They generate electricity. There is nothing in that city that depends on outside import. Now the city is designed as a self-sufficient, self-carrying institution. The city has a built-in transportation. You get in and you dial where you want to go or verbalize. You want to go to the art center, music center, school, you get on a conveyor, it'll take you anywhere in the city in less than 20 minutes. Instead of having automobiles in the city, with each person driving a car, you're going to have accidents. You're going to endanger population. So we have no automobiles in the city. Between cities, if you want to travel from one city to another city, we have a monorail. So when you get to the city, it lets you off in the middle of the next radio system, which may be the outer perimeter. And there's a train that takes you all around the city and lets you off at the different radials. And you take a, another unit in and there's an elevator. Some of the units that transport you move up, down, around and sideways. So you don't have to get out and get onto another transport unit. The transport units themselves will go up the building with 40 people in it and take them to their working area. The middle of the city has these little buildings all around it. The eight little buildings around the little domes are access centers where you can access anything that you have need for. After you access a camera, you take all the pictures, you return the camera to the camera center. You can keep it for a month or longer. But when you're through, you return it to the camera center so other people can have the use. When you're finished with a camera, you leave it in the, your office for three or four days or a week. It could be used all the time. You've got schools, dental care, medical care, access to goods and services, everything that the community needs. And every district is the same distance from the access center. And all waste is recycled under the roadways. And all delivery to the city is made by delivery systems under the roadways, so it doesn't obstruct traffic. And the, the train that takes you around the city is 30 feet off the ground. If, like if you go to France or England, you see buses at street level and streetcars, and they have to stop at every corner because there's other traffic going the other way. 30 feet off the ground, they don't have to stop. They just let you off where you're going. The Venus Project envisions that through advanced technology, all buildings will be constructed to be in harmony with the environment. And there will be clean, quiet, and safe neighborhoods. City residents will be able to live happy, well-adjusted lives, free from the noise and stresses found in today's cities. At the Venus Project, they do work in surveys and try to find out the easiest least energy expenditure me method of building a city that provides for human needs. It must provide for their health, it must keep the air clean with electrostatic air filters so that you don't breathe dust or anything else. No industry will make any noise in the future. There are systems of generating wave fronts of sound and jamming noise. So you can walk by a factory of the future and not hear a thing. In the future, most things will be soundproof. The Venus Project's staff and volunteers are currently working towards making Jacques Fresco's vision of a sustainable, holistic society through high-level engineering and technology a reality by spreading his ideas across the globe. 
Our appreciation goes to you, Mr. Fresco, for speaking to us about your plans to help constructively transform our world. For more information on the Venus Project and to see available books, DVDs, and CDs by Mr. Fresco, please visit www.thevenusproject.com. Download a free ebook version of Jacques Fresco's Designing the Future in Various Languages at the same website. Please join us again next Friday on Golden Age Technology for the conclusion of our two-part series when we will introduce more of the amazing concepts and designs from the Venus Project. Caring viewers, thank you for joining us today on our program. Next on Supreme Master Television is Vegetarianism, the noble way of living, after noteworthy news. May we soon see all nations working together to create solutions for the most pressing issues facing our world. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash GAT.